If you'd like to turn to the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk, page 1508, if you're using the Bibles, if you're struggling to find him, the H's and the Z's slip together towards the back end of the Minor Prophets. So if you go Zechariah, you've got Haggai, you've got Zephaniah, you've got Habakkuk, if you're going backwards. So the H's and the Z's, that's how I always used to remember it. Habakkuk and chapter 1. I'm going to read the first chapter and a few verses of the second. The oracle which Habakkuk the prophet saw. This was a burden that God's servant received by, by vision, by revelation. How long, O Lord, will I call for help and thou wilt not hear? I cry out to thee violence, yet thou dost not save. Why dost thou make me see iniquity, cause me to look on wickedness? Yes, destruction and violence are before me. Strife exists and contention arises. Therefore the law is ignored and justice is never upheld. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore justice comes out perverted. That's Habakkuk speaking to the Lord. And then the next verse we get the Lord speaking. Look among the nations. Observe. Be astonished and wonder, because I'm doing something in your days you would not believe if you were told. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, that fierce and impetuous people who march throughout the earth to seize dwelling places which are not theirs. They're dreaded and feared, their justice and authority originate with themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards, keener than wolves in the evening. Their horsemen come galloping, their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle swooping down to devour. All of them come for violence. Their horde of faces move forward. They collect captives like sand. They mock at kings and rulers are a laughing matter to them. They laugh at every fortress and heap up rubble to capture it. Then they will sweep through like the wind, pass on, but they will be held guilty. They whose strength is their God. Then we're back to Habakkuk. Art thou not from everlasting? O Lord my God, my Holy One, we will not die. Thou, O Lord, hast appointed them to judge. And thou, O Rock, hast established them to correct. Thine eyes are too pure to approve evil. And thou canst not look on wickedness with favour. Why dost thou look with favour on those who deal treacherously? Why art thou silent when the wicked swallow up those more righteous than they? Why hast thou made men like the fish of the sea, like creeping things without a ruler over them? The Chaldeans bring all of them up with a hook, drag them away with their net, and gather them together in their fishing net. Therefore they rejoice and are glad. Therefore they offer a sacrifice to their net and burn incense to their fishing net because through these things their catch is large and their food is plentiful. Will they therefore empty their net and continually slay nations without sparing? I will stand on my guard post and station myself on the rampart, and I will keep watch to see 
what he will speak to me and how I may reply when I am reproved. Then the Lord answered me and said, Record the vision and inscribe it on tablets that the one who reads it may run. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hastens toward the goal. It will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it. For it will certainly come. It will not delay. Behold, as for the proud one, his soul is not right within him. But the righteous will live by his faith. One of the most well-known verses in the Old Testament. But I don't think it's often brought to attention the context of the verse. And so I want us to think a little bit about that this morning. I believe this book could have been written for the days that we live in. And I believe the Lord has instruction for us through this passage. God's servant Habakkuk. Habakkuk means to hold on to, to embrace. Habakkuk is Mr. Klingon. He takes hold on the Lord and he's not going to let go. That's what faith is, dear friends. That's the kind of faith which makes one righteous. Habakkuk faith. Klingon faith. Holding on to the Lord and not letting go. Where the bride, he is the bridegroom. And the bride will do what? Leave and cleave. That's what we need to be doing, dear friends. I don't think we preach that well enough. There's a lot of things when we come to Jesus that we need to leave, dear friends. Jesus said, if any man comes after me, let him deny himself. We need to leave our own ways. We need to leave those things behind. We need to turn around. God has commanded all men everywhere to repent. That means to turn 180 degrees. We leave those things. We leave our desires. We leave our passions. We leave our ambitions. We leave all our covetousness. We leave our filthy desires and we turn to the Lord and we cling to him. We cleave to him. We lay hold on Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith. We say, you're mine. You bought me and I'm going to take hold of you and hold on to you and be joined to you. Not only today, but every day of my life until you take me to glory. We need to cleave to him, dear friends. And Habakkuk is a cleaver. He is the one who holds on, who holds fast. You say, is that, is that New Testament stuff? Well, let's look at some verses. Luke chapter 8. <clears throat> Should we hold on to him? Who is the word of God? The Lord Jesus. Luke chapter 8 verse 15. The seed and the good soil. These are the ones who have heard the word with an honest and good heart. And do what? Hold it fast. They take hold of it. And they don't let go dear friends. We're going to take hold of all the promises of God, of all that God has said to us. We're going to lay hold on them and not let, not let them go. We're going to take hold of him who is the word of God and not let him go. We're going to cleave to our blessed Saviour. 1 Corinthians chapter 15.
1 Corinthians 15. <clears throat> now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved. If what? You hold fast, dear friends. What do you need to do? Hold fast. You need to take hold on Jesus, dear friends. You need to push your way through. You need to strive to enter that narrow way and take hold on him and not let him go. You're going to trust him. You're going to receive him and be received by him. You're going to be joined to him. You're not going to let go of him. You're going to hold on. Habakkuk was a holder on. And we need to be those that hold on to our Saviour. We need to take hold on him. He's going to take us by the hand, dear friends, and he's going to hold us. And we've got to hold on to him. Praise God. Philippians chapter 2. Tell me when you've got the point. Philippians chapter 2. Verse 16, holding fast the word of life. Doing what? Holding fast, dear friends. Clinging to, cleaving to, what? The word of God. Hebrews, chapter 3. Verse 6, Christ was faithful as a son over his house. Whose house we are if we hold fast our confidence. What do we need to do? Hold fast, dear friends. Take hold and hang on and cleave to our confidence and the boast of our hope firm until the end. How long? To the end, dear friends. To the end. Hebrews 3.14 We have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance firm until, until the end, dear friends. We need to be Habakkuk's. We need to be Klingons. We need to be hold fasters. Amen. 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 He, Hebrews 4.14 Since then we have a great high priest who's passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. Hold on. Hebrews 10. Verse 20, <clears throat> 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. We could go on, but I'd better get on. This man holds on to the Lord. He's got a few complaints. I don't know if you've got any complaints. <clears throat> but if you have, don't bring them to me. Take them to the Lord. If you're going to mourn, go mourn to the Lord. What's his complaint? Number one complaint. There's a lot of violence about. Everything's erupting. And he's living in a very violent world. He's looking around. And that's all he can seem to see is violence. What else? Contention and strife. Everywhere he looks, he sees contention and strife. And he's saying, are we, are we on the point of a civil war here? Well, what? It's, it's getting so violent. There's so much contention and strife. It's surrounding me. It's everywhere. And he's taking it to the Lord. And Lord, you, you know what else I'm saying? 
I'm seeing a lawlessness. I'm seeing an injustice. I'm, I'm seeing in, in, in this nation, I, I'm seeing there's a group of people who have been treated completely different to another group of people. It's unjust. There's no justice in this nation anymore. It's filled with violence, contention and strife. Lord, what's happening? And Lord, just one more thing. Why am I one of the only people who seems to see it? Everybody else seems to be completely blind to what's going on. But every day I get up and that's all I see. Every night I go to bed, that's what's on my mind. It's all I can think of. It's all I can see. It's like you're surrounding me with this, Lord. What's all that about, Lord? Why me? And he has three prayers. Number one. How long is this going on? How long is this going on, Lord? Is this, is this the best it's going to get? Is this it? Day after day, I'm going to get up and I'm going to look around and it's going to be lawlessness and strife and contention and injustice. Is it going to get worse? And worse and worse. Are we living in perilous times? Of violent times? Of lawlessness? How's my love not going to go cold if that's what it's going to be day after day and all I can see? And why do you make me see it? Can I just have a walk around the garden and look at some nice flowers? Can I just go to a football match and, and shout and carry on? And Why can't I get this out of my mind? Why is that all that's on my heart all the time, Lord? Why? Why me? And why, Lord, I'm pouring all this out before you. I'm casting all my cares upon you, knowing that you care for me. And it's not getting better, it's getting worse. Why? I don't know <clears throat> that we'll ever go through what Habakkuk's gone through. But that's his state. That's his position. Why is God not answering his prayers? Well, the simple answer to that is God is answering his prayers. How do you see answered prayer? If you go to the Lord and tell him that you need a brand new spanking new car with nice plush seats, one that doesn't break down every five minutes, and a really nice colour. Lord, can you can you can you get me a nice white one? No, no, not let's not have white, it'll look dirty and I might have to wash it. I'll, I'll have a silver one. What about that, Lord? And the Lord says, no. Is that an answer? Yes. That's an answer, isn't it? Does God always answer our prayers? Yes, he does, dear friends. The trouble is, we're not always listening. We're just watching for the car. We can't hear, no. Not for you. It'll do your heart. More, more problems than anything else, that car. You're not having it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, God answers his servant. How long? God says, not long. Not long. I'm here to tell you this morning, not long, dear friends. It's momentary light affliction. Momentary light affliction. Compared to the eternal weight of glory, when the trumpet sounds, when we're gathered to him, when we're changed in the twinkling of an eye, when we see him as he is, and when we're escorted gloriously into his presence. And all that we thought or imagined about our blessed Saviour and how wonderful he might be, we see that it's infinitely beyond anything we could even think or imagine. And all we can say is Amen and Hallelujah. And we're surrounded by people from every tribe and tongue and people that he's bought for himself and they're doing the same. Oh, what a day that will be. And God says, not long. Not long. He's coming soon, dear friends. He's coming soon. When you see these things, look up. Not long. What else? Why me, Lord? Why do I have to see it? Why do I have to look on these things? Why does it bother me so much and other people don't seem to be worried about it all? Why? Why give me that burden? Why lay that upon me, Lord? Why am I seeing things that other people don't seem to be bothered about? Why? Turn to Genesis <coughs> chapter 18. As in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. As in the days of Lot. Lot. What happened in the days of Lot? The filthiness, dear friends, of man's iniquity was so evil God visited. God came down. Couldn't believe that man would descend into such depravity and wickedness. <clears throat> Verse 17. There was a man called Abraham. And he was a friend of God. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Since Abraham will surely become a great and mighty nation, and in him all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Am I going to hide from him? No. I'm going to open Abraham's eyes. I'm going to let him see the way that I see because I know what he's like. I know what Abraham will do. Really, Lord? Yes. He's my friend. I've walked with him for years. I know what he's like. I can show him these things. I can show him how grieved I am. I can show him how angry I am with the wickedness of Sodom and I know what he'll do. I know him. He's going to come and he's going to stand before me and he's going to start reasoning with me and interceding with me and pleading with me that I might save and snatch people out of that filthy wretched mess. That's what he's going to do. And so I'm going to open his eyes to it all. And Habakkuk's saying, why, why, why am I seeing it? Why am I weighted down with this awful burden of all this violence and all this contention and all this strife and all this accursed sin around me and the wretched nation and I'm seeing it. It's too much for me. 
Why are you laying it on me, Lord? Because you're a Klingon, Habakkuk. I know you are. You're going to take hold of me, Habakkuk. And you're going to start pleading. You're going to start laying these things before me, like my friend Abraham did. Turn to the book of Ezekiel. <clears throat> God knows. Maybe you're thinking in these days, why am I so bothered about certain things and nobody else seems to care? Why am I seeing things and I'm horrified with the depth and depravity of the sin? Why? Because nobody else seems to be bothered. Why? That's what Habakkuk was going through. Do you understand? Ezekiel chapter 9. I read from verse 3. The glory of the Lord God of Israel went up from the cherub on which it had been to the threshold of the temple. He called to the man clothed in linen at whose loins was the writing case. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, even through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and groan over all the abominations which have been committed in the midst of it. In the last days, dear friends, there's two different marks being set out. Those who follow Antichrist are going to have a mark. Those who cleave to Jesus, dear friends, are going to have a mark. They're going to have a mark because they've grieved over the abominations and the sins around them. Amen. He's going to mark you out if you've wept over the sins that you see. And there'll be a hiding place for you in the cleft of the rock. Why no answer, Lord? God says, you're not ready for the answer, Habakkuk. You're not ready for it. I am Lord. You can tell me anything. Okay. Okay, Habakkuk. You're ready. I'm going to give your nation over to Islam. They're going to start filling up the mosques with weapons. They're going to start parading through your streets with an arrogant pride like you've never seen before. A boastful, arrogant pride, they're going to take your nation. And nothing's going to stop them. No, you can't do that, Lord. You can't do that. I thought you said you were ready for the answer. Yeah, but you can't do that. No, you can't look on wickedness. You don't want Britain full of Alarak bars. Oh, that's what I'm going to do, Habakkuk. It's the only way. I'm not just going to deal with their pride. I'm going to deal with the whole pride. Do 
just three things. Habakkuk, <clears throat> when he takes it on board and it gets through to him what God's saying to him. He picks himself up off the floor and he said, right, I know what I need to do. Do you know what you need to do in these days, dear friends? Three things. Number one, Habakkuk says I must stand in my place. I must stand in my place. Where's God put you, dear friends? Have you found your place? Habakkuk says, I must stand in my place. God's called me as a watchman. God's called me. God has me where he wants me. I need to stand. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6. You say, not there again. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord, in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand firm against all the schemes of the devil. Our wrestling, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Habakkuk says, okay, Lord, if that's what you're going to do, if that's the only way, if that's the only way to start, sort this nation out, if that's the only way to have a people for yourself, I'm going to go stand. I'm going to stand. Where you put me. What else, Habakkuk? Number two, I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch. Turn to Mark chapter 14. <coughs> Read from verse 35. Jesus went a little beyond them, fell to the ground, began to pray that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. And he was saying, Abba, Father, all things are possible for thee. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch with me for one hour? What does the Lord want from you? He wants you to stand, dear friends, and having done all to stand. But he wants you to watch with him. He wants you to watch and pray. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? What faith? Well, the context is a woman who keeps on going to an unrighteous judge, remember? For justice. And he can't stop her. And Jesus said, you've heard what the unrighteous judge, how much more? But when the Son of Man comes, will he find that kind of faith? Will he find that kind of holding on to God? Will he find people 
who watch and pray right through to the end and hold on to him. Dear friends, we need to go and take these things in the Lord's presence and pour them out and lay them out before him and speak with him until we see things the way that he sees them. And that's what Habakkuk knew. He says, I, I've got to go and watch. I've got to go and sit in God's presence because I'm still struggling with this Chaldean thing. I'm still struggling with what God's going to do. And I've still not got it right in my own heart. I still can't say, yes, Lord, do it. And do it with might if that's what you need to do. So I'm going to go and I'm going to watch. I'm going to spend time in his presence until I see things the way that he sees them. Amen. Amen. And what else? <clears throat> he says, God says, I want you to, <clears throat> I want you to put it all up on a big board. I want you to make it as clear as you possibly can to everybody around you. As soon as you see it, right? I want you to go and I want you to make it known. You put it up on a big board if you want. Get a poster, a banner, whatever. But get it up in big letters, make it as clear as you possibly can. And you've got to present it to the people around you in a way that they will run. You say, run? You want people running? You've got enough people running around on our street. No! We don't want them running around the street. We want them to run and flee from the wrath to come. You've got to get this out. You've got to get this in your heart and in your mind. You need to see the purposes of God. You need to see how God is committed to bringing down every pride of man in these last days and giving people one last chance to call upon the Saviour, to flee from the wrath to come and to take hold of Jesus. You, you, you've got to be a John the Baptist. You've got to be a voice in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. I'm giving you a message. All flesh is like grass. All its loveliness like the flower of the field. And it's all going to be cut down. People are going to be cut down, dear friends. People are going to be cut off from the earth. People are going to face the judgment of God. It's coming. And you've got to present that message in such a way that they'll run to the Saviour. How do you do that? You're going to have to get close to him. You're going to have to sit in his presence. You're going to have to watch with him. You're going to have to understand the heart of God. So that you can go and make it so clear that people run to the Saviour. Well, they still can. You say, is it that simple? Yeah. That was the message of Habakkuk. I believe it's the message for us today. I believe that's what the Lord's laid on my heart this morning. I hope you can see it the way I see it. I hope I've presented it the way I feel the Lord wanted me to present it to you this morning. And I hope the Spirit of God ministers it to your heart. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this little 
book of Habakkuk, this little prophet. One of those books that kind of gets squat away with others that we don't particularly spend much time in. And yet, Lord, there's a message here, I believe, for us. And we thank you for this man who, who was, a, was a, a cleaver, uh, someone who held on to God, someone who, whatever was happening around him, he, he was spending time in your presence and, and pouring it all out to you and, and speaking it out with you and, and asking and inquiring and pleading with you. Lord, we thank you for that example and we thank you for this little interchange with him Lord and we pray that you'll help us to take out of it Lord what you want us to take out of it for these coming days so please give us understanding and speak to our hearts we pray and we ask this in Jesus name and for Jesus praise and glory Amen, Amen. Amen.